You're welcome, guys. We just cured anxiety. Oh, my God! Jesus Christ, we almost died! Alright, what's the deal, Cardenlios? So, I've been getting a lot of DMs and messages about the truck driver out in Colorado who received uh, 110 years for uh, vehicular manslaughter of four people. And I think on the face of it, off the back, yes, it's an excessive amount of time that he shouldn't have gotten. But don't quite feel sorry for the guy off the back. We, on the channel here, we do our homework, and we definitely did a little investigation on most of the events that happened. I'm sure some of the stuff that we'll never truly know. And I want to paint out the whole scenario out to you guys first that way we can come with the conclusion of how much time is really fair and what happened so here we go this is the gentleman first of all that we're speaking of that is a uh, rogel aguilar mederos this happened in 2019 he was driving an 18-wheeler semi-truck filled with lumber as you can see it's all there on the bottom in the in that fiery wreck well there is a lot of Videos that a lot of you guys may have not seen. Let's start off with this guy here. He was a, he's a YouTuber, something hamburger. I'm not too really sure what his name is. But he actually caught the, the truck speeding down the, the road. You're welcome, guys. We just cured anxiety. Oh, my God! Jesus Christ, we almost died! Oh, my God! Something's on fire. Blew up up here, guys. Catches some more stuff, and he's pretty much in the thick of it there. It was a wreck. I mean, it was a huge wreck. There we go. I think the guy was going about 85 miles per hour on that stretch of the I-70, Interstate 70 in Colorado. All right. Well, I started looking more into it, and I found a very good piece by Channel 4 in Colorado that they did uh, on the whole incident. And I want to play it for you guys right now, as a matter of fact. An 18-wheeler, it's Harold Trent. He's director of the United States Truck Driving School in Wheat Ridge. He took us down Lookout Mountain to show us how this is supposed to be driven. The yellow sign warns steep grade, sharp curves ahead. Meaning that being a gear low enough that will keep you in control. He says that will make it less necessary to use the brakes. We found there were uphill stretches where the out-of-control driver could have slowed. And here comes the well-marked runaway truck ramp. The suspect truck barreled on past it, instead moving to the left and forcing a pick. Right there on the right-hand side, let's go back up a little bit here. You can clearly see the truck uh, escape route there. And the guy, instead of hitting that right, truck truck he comes all the way to the left. It, it makes no sense. It's getting a little bit fishy. He's forcing a pickup off the road. He should have exited right here and followed that truck ramp around. By now, the chance to move into a lower gear appears to have passed. It's near to impossible for a driver to make a downshift at that rate of speed. The driver even after the runaway truck ramp filled with sand and gravel was passed, there were other opportunities to stop. Could he have been pulled off here? Yes, he absolutely could have started shutting the truck down here. Instead, the truck continued on to Denver West, and this was the horrifying result. So as you can see there, he had ample time to hit that runaway truck uh, zone or area. It's a long stretch of, of that I-70. It wasn't like it's a block away. I got some actual images to show you guys here. So, so this is right here. Pause it real quick. This is when you're coming up on it, right? All that long on the right-hand side is the area is full of a... Uh, usually, fill it up with gravel a couple feet down, so the truck's going to stop. Any vehicle's going to stop. Keep going. Big, huge yellow signs flashing. And the... Now, let's go back a little bit. This area here was where the guy started going, merging to the left instead of merging into that pit area. So 
it's crazy, but I'm starting to believe that this guy may have had some kind of mental problem because it seems to me like he was on a mission to actually crash that truck because he had every opportunity. All that yellow area right there is filled with gravel. It's a huge, long area. I would say it's a few football fields long easily where the guy had all the time in the world to hit that side of that, that pit. But instead, he kept plowing down the, the road, the highway, the interstate, actually. This is part of the interstate before he actually hit the vehicles. You can see on the left, there's an area he could have just plowed into. There's places on the right-hand side. There was a lot of area that this guy could have sent, uh, took the truck off and not crashed into these other vehicles. I Google Earthed it. I looked at it. There was a lot of areas a guy could have just pulled over, put it on neutral. I know it's easier said than done, but you're supposed to be a professional truck driver. I wonder if him not being able to speak the language or read the language had a lot to do with it. But you would think that these guys would be trained enough to know, listen, you're on a highway, your brakes go out. And I know for a fact they train them on that. This is what you do. Again, I am not sure what the guy's mental being was at the time. But by looking at the news video, by Google earthing it and seeing everything that went down, it almost, I mean, I, 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 if I was a bit man, I would say this guy was trying to commit suicide. He had some mental stuff going on. And instead of hitting one of those, those grass areas on the left, those grass areas on the right, or the truck ramp, the runaway truck ramp, he had, God, he had time and time and time again to put this truck away from people, from keeping harm. But he, what he did... You saw it go that quick by this that one gentleman. He just flew by with all those vehicles in the way. So it was like he disregarded every law in the book regarding truck driving, and he plowed into those people. And we got to remember, there's four people that died, that were killed by this young man's actions. Now, is 110 years justice? No, I don't believe so. I don't think for one... For one minute, 110 years. I think this young man should eventually get the opportunity to come out and make something of his life and try to at least, you know, uh, um, make amends. Maybe not directly to the people, but, you know, just to the world karma itself. The issue I have also, though, is this. The original DA that charged him was no longer the DA. He had already resigned or, or lost his election, whatever it was. The new DA came in here. And actually offered Rogel a deal. I'm not sure what the deal was because that DA's office hasn't released that yet. But if they offered him like a 12-year deal, maybe even 15, maybe, I could see, you know what, let's try to take a deal. We, t we took four people's lives. But according to the district attorney, Rogel was adamant that he will not take any deal whatsoever, that the only thing he would take would be a speeding ticket. Because according to him, all he did was get into an accident, which was a truck's fault because of the brakes. And he's wrong there. He is partially to blame, not just the truck, but he's operating that vehicle, and he missed every opportunity to avoid this disaster, right? I personally feel that... He should do 10 to 12 years. Um, there's four people that have lost their lives. There's four families that have been destroyed because of this man's actions and also maybe because of his bad luck with the truck. But you can't dismiss those four people and just say, hey, it was an accident because how are they going to feel? You, you know, it's, injustice to one is injustice to everybody. Is 110 years excessive? Absolutely. This, this sends the wrong message to any truck driver out there that's bringing food, bringing clothes, bringing goods, because that's what they do. The majority of truck drivers are out there every day putting their life on their line, our lives out there, because those are big, huge pieces of equipment that if they're not maintained or driven in properly like this gentleman did, you're going to lose lives. But to give the 110 years, and let me, let me also tell you why he got those 110 years. One, he didn't take the deal. Two, the way the former district attorney stacked the charges up against him, it made him like a violent criminal. And they have the minimum, uh, what's it called? Minimum mandatory sentencing. They have minimum mandatory sentencing 
from the 90s. Because why? Because crime was going through the roof through the 90s. People were tired of it. And they started making like the three strike laws, mandatory minimums. And this guy got cut up from the back laws from back in the 90s when people were acting a fool. And he got stacked up where every charge was not run consec. I mean, uh, concurrently, which means everything's running at the same time. He Now he's running consecutive, which means each charge he's got to do the time for. So if he gets like eight years for this one, eight years for this one, eight years for this one, for each count that he got, he's got to do that time. And that's why it added up to 110 years. The follow-up right now is the governor of Colorado has made a statement, said he is looking into it. Uh, he doesn't know yet that if they have already uh, put in the, the paperwork in there to, uh, I think, commute his sentence, right, make it smaller. But, again, me, myself, I do think that the time is excessive. It's way too much time. But at the same time, I do believe this young man really screwed up and it cost people their lives and millions of dollars of damage, right? So, to me, I say 10 to 12 years. Maybe he's out in eight um, I'd like to get your guys' feedback. Leave a comment out there. Tell me if more time, less time, or just the right amount of time. Other than that, guys, you guys have a great weekend. Make sure to subscribe and like this channel. Late.